The EU Council now has approved an agreement reached with the United Kingdom, which secures the fishing rights of EU fishers in the Atlantic and the North Sea. The timely conclusion of the annual consultations for 2024 will ensure stability and certainty for EU fishers and for the industry. The agreement reached in the EU-UK annual consultations determines fishing rights for 2024 for around 100 shared fish stocks, in particular the total allowable catches, the so-called TACs, that is the maximum quantities of fish from specific stocks that can be caught at each party's respective fishing rights. This agreement is part of the annual process of setting fishing opportunities in EU and non-EU waters for the coming year and it was endorsed via a written procedure. At the Agriculture and Fisheries Council meeting, which will take place on uh, December 10th and 11th, the figures for stocks shared with the UK become part of the main regulation on fishing opportunities for the Atlantic and the North Sea. That regulation also covers stocks that the EU manages on its own or via agreements reached in the regional fisheries management organizations in addition to the stocks shared with the UK and other third parties. The EU and the UK base their agreement on the best scientific advice available provided by the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea, that's the ICES. The deal reached by the two parties is also in line with the objectives of the EU's common fisheries policy and of the trade and cooperation agreement concluded with the UK. For stocks with no ICES advice, the EU and the UK agreed to work together to improve the availability of data to inform future scientific advice. On stocks with zero catch advice, delegations agreed that it would be appropriate to establish specific TACs for bycatches, that species that are caught unintentionally while fishing for other specific species. The level of these TACs has been set to ensure that fishing mortality does not increase and that the stock can be rebuilt. For some stocks, a small TAC was set to allow continued monitoring of the stock. In line with scientific advice, there are some of the stocks for which the EU and the UK agreed to decrease the TACs for 2024 compared to 23. For example, for Haddock in the Irish Sea with more, minus 14.5% and Haddock in the Celtic Sea with 30.6%. Whiting in the Celtic Sea with 50% and uh, place bycatches in the English Channel by minus 42%. But there are also some examples of stocks for which the EU and the UK agreed to increase the TACs for 24 compared to 2023. That is, for example, whiting in the west of Scotland with plus 20%. Magrims in the North Sea with 9.6% and following the UK's withdrawal from the EU, fish stocks jointly managed by the EU and the UK are considered shared resources under international law. That's why they had to do this. The trade and cooperation agreement between the two parties sets out the terms under which the EU and the UK determine their respective fishing rights in the Atlantic and the North Sea. Under the trade and cooperation agreement, both parties agree to hold annual consultations with a view to determining TACs and quotas for the following year. Consultations are led by the Commission and take into account a number of factors. That includes international obligations, but also ensuring the long-term uh, long sustainability of fishing in line with the EU's common fisheries policy and the best available scientific advice. And when it is not available, a precautionary approach is taken and they also have to take into account the need to protect the livelihoods of the fishers. The agreement includes a licensing system for fishing vessels through which mutual access to each other's waters is granted. The Council receives regular updates on the progress of the negotiations and its role is to provide guidance to the Commission on the EU's position, but also to approve the final agreement on the annual TACs and quotas before the formal conclusion of the consultations with the United Kingdom. 
In this case, Luis Planas Pujades, a Spanish Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, said about the current negotiations, Our agreement with the United Kingdom secures important fishing opportunities for our fishers and was reached thanks to the goodwill demonstrated by both parties during the negotiations. We have ensured that our fishing rights in the Atlantic and the North Sea will continue to be protected in the coming year and we are living up to our sustainability commitments. Well, during the Agriculture and Fisheries Council meeting, which uh, now when you see this took place on 10th and 11th December, ministers aim to reach a political agreement on the overall fishing opportunities in the Atlantic and the North Sea for 24, and in some cases also for 2025 and 2026. The figures for the EU-UK shared stocks did become part of that political agreement. Subsequently, the text of the political agreement will be finalized by the Council's legal and linguistic experts. And after this, the regulation will be formally adopted by the Council and then published in the official journal. The provisions will apply from January 1st in 2024. But I have to remind you that fishing rights have been a contentious issue in the UK-EU negotiations from the outset of the Brexit process. The UK fishing industry has long argued that it was unfairly disadvantaged by the EU's common fisheries policy, which granted EU boats access to British waters while restricting UK boats access to EU waters. The UK government has therefore sought to regain control of its fishing waters as one of the key objectives of Brexit. Under the CFP, EU boats had access to British waters to fish certain shared fish stocks, and they still do, and the UK's withdrawal from the EU meant that this access would no longer be automatic. The UK government and the EU negotiated a transitional period that ran from the end of the Brexit transition period in January 2020 until the end of 2022. And during this period, the CFP continued to apply to British waters, with the EU still granting access to EU boats. The TCA, which came into force in January 2021, established a new framework for the relationship between the UK and the EU. The TCA included a specific agreement on fishing rights. Under this agreement, 25% of the EU's fishing rights in UK waters were to be transferred progressively to the UK fleet between 2021 and 2026. The UK also agreed to provide preferential access to EU boats for certain fish stocks. The TCA provided for those annual negotiations on fishing rights after the end of the transition period. The first round of these negotiations took place in 22, the second round in 23, and that just finished now. And the negotiations are expected to continue in 24 and beyond. The negotiations on fishing rights are necessary because the TCA only established a temporary framework for fisheries management. The UK and the EU need to agree on a permanent arrangement for managing the shared fish stocks in their waters. This is important because there is a need to ensure that fish stocks are managed sustainably so that they can continue to be a valuable source of food and income for both sides. The negotiations on fishing rights are challenging because the UK and the EU have different interests in the management of the shared fish stocks. The UK government wants to give UK fishermen greater access to its waters, while the EU wants to ensure that its fishermen continue to have access to those waters. The two sides also have different views on how to manage the fish stocks sustainably. It's quite interesting what happened now because with all the tension around fisheries in the negotiations on the TCA, already on the withdrawal agreement, and uh, that some people in the UK forgot that um, the fishing rights are also linked to exporting what the UK fishermen catch to the EU, and uh, that there are always two sides of a medal. And so I am absolutely surprised that this topic didn't appear anywhere, that they reached an agreement now, because I haven't heard anything from the Brexiteer press that they were angry about this. I didn't hear about any trouble in the negotiations. 
because that went so smoothly that everybody probably only will know about the result now. And that shows a difference. I mean, Sunak has a lot of trouble at home, but he changed the stance on the Brit of the British government towards the EU in, in the handling and in the diplomacy. And this is just one of those signs here. So with everything else I have to say about this government, there was improvement, obviously. Otherwise, um, many of you wouldn't just hear about this topic here on my channel. It would have been um, going around for a bit with, with a lot of trouble. Nevertheless, it was politics again. So if you want to get away from politics for once, you see the banner up there uh, through the video. That is a chance on my other channel to take a rest from politics. But if you're still up for politics, the next video is right in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.